Hey, I'm Cody from Unqualified Gamers, a podcast member of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the one you're listening to right now. The opinions expressed are those of each individual. Check out other podcasts at GunnaGeekNetwork.com and get ready because geekiness begins in three, two, one. Welcome to Better Podcasting, a show where we talk about podcast tips, tools, and best practices to help you succeed with your podcast. What makes us different? Well, just like you, we podcast purely out of the love and fun of it. Podcasting is our hobby, and we recognize that it's yours too. We always encourage your questions and feedback, and you can find all of our contact information at betterpodcasting.com. Here's your host for the show, Stephen John Drew and Stargate Pioneer. to episode five of Better Podcasting. I'm Stephen John Drew, and with me today, of course, is my co-host or cohort, Stargate Pioneer. What's up, SP? Just thinking about all those Christmas lights that you've put up and are lighting up your life and your neighbor's lives with. It was pretty amazing how they all shape a microphone. Isn't that awesome? (laughs) It's incredible. And it not just any microphone, but the Heil PR40. That is <laughs> yeah. that is awesome. You know, I was thinking actually, so if you're not familiar with me, uh my insanity, I love to put up lights at Christmas lights. I am uh, or at Christmas time, I am slowly becoming Clark Griswold, and it occurred to me that it would be really awesome to put on my roof line in lights betterpodcasting.com, but I thought maybe poor taste. <laughs> That's just for next year. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, But we are here today with some very, very special and exciting news. SP, why don't you go ahead and tell that news? We are now part of the GunnaGeek.com network. If you didn't tell by the header and the pre-roll at the very start of the show. uh, Yes, we have indeed been uh, invited to be included into the Gunna Geek Network. We did apply. Uh, We did mention that on previous shows. And uh, Mm -hmm. they have indeed accepted our application. So that was very, very exciting. And uh, the Gunna Geek Network, if you're not familiar with it, it is a network of geeky podcasts. Uh, There's several of them, which you will hear some familiar voices, i.e. SP and myself. We're on several of them. There are some not so familiar voices as well. There are some podcasts that are fairly new, some that have been around for a long time, and uh, some that are live, some that are not live. So there's a, a, a good mixed bag full of content and geeky podcasts available on Gunna Geek Network. So we're very, very happy to be a part of that. It feels like being home. It really does. It really does. It's something that, you know, because our other shows that we do are part of the Gunna Geek Network, so often we go to put in the Gunna Geek Network spiel and it doesn't work out. So uh, because we can't do it on here, we weren't part of the network, but now we are. So you will you will hear us continue to promote that Gunna Geek Network because we're, we're very proud of the network and all the content on there. And if you're starting up a podcast on your own and you think it has geeky content that is like-minded, go ahead and apply to the Gunna Geek Network. Just go to gunnageek.com slash about for all the information on how to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So today we are going to continue in with our several part series on the foundation of podcasting. We've talked about a variety of things from brainstorming your idea to recording your idea to editing, to a whole bunch of other stuff. And today we're going to go a little bit towards the the more advanced side of things. Today we're going to be talking about live streaming and broadcasting. Now this is something that we've mentioned it before on prior episodes, and we're going, going to mention it again today. We highly encourage you to wait to do this because it is something that uh, you'll see we don't do this show live because we are still finding our feet. It is something that as you get your show together, you will find there are certain things that you are going to want to edit out later, certain things that you might just have to take a few moments just to regroup because you get stuck on a point. There will be all sorts of things that come up as you are finding your way with a brand new podcast. It doesn't matter how many times you've done podcasts before. It will be a new thing to you. It will be a new baby. So uh, you got it. You got to learn the baby. 
And uh, that's something that I don't think anybody in podcasting has ever made that analogy, by the way. I think that that was a terrible analogy. <laughs> a baby to live podcasting? I've heard that babies prevent podcasting, but I've not heard babies... Well, I, I'll I'll counter that. My first podcast is my baby. It doesn't exist anymore. It exists, but it's no longer active. And that's my baby. So yeah, I mean... I, I can get it. And and we went through the same thing where we started out not live, then we went live audio only, but we went live to get fan interaction and it worked out well that way. And I think that's an excellent progression. And, and I think as the podcast goes on, just like a baby, uh, bottles are consumed during the po- No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself, sir. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, but, I like the tea, personally. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, but no, seriously, this is something that we do encourage you to hold off on doing the live stream until you do get things going. We've said it before. Eventually, this will be live streamed when we record, but just not yet. Uh, but we still want to talk about it because it is something that the earlier that you start considering this, the more you can prepare yourself to execute on the live stream and make it happen in a more smooth manner. So we're going to talk about some of the services today. And uh, the first one that we're going to talk about is one that has, honestly, I'm going to say that it has been the industry staple up until recent months, and it is called Hangouts on Air. I think this mm-hmm. is one of the most straightforward ones uh, that has been around. It has been an early adopter of live streaming. Yes, it can be video. Yes, it is meant to be video, but you don't have to do video. I have known lots of podcasts, ones that I've actually done myself that have only been streamed audio. Now, what's nice about Hangouts on Air is it is a Google product and it works right into Google Plus or if you have the Hangouts um uh, link all bookmarked on your computer, things like that. It is it is a, a built-in Google product, and it's a matter of going in, setting a start date and a time, uh, getting all your hosts to join the call, and then you can hit start broadcast, and you're out there. If everybody has cameras, bonus. It starts to go out there. There are uh, more advanced things that you can do as well. There are an additional applications that you can add called cameraman, which allows you to have a little more control over the video. You can add what's called a lower third, which is usually the title bar that you see along the bottom. Uh, you could do a whole bunch of other things. You can mute and unmute the, the guests. There's a bunch of control and things that are in there. Should you want to do that? Now, that's the nice thing about Hangouts on Air. You don't have to do that. And what is a bonus about it is Hangouts on Air streams through YouTube. So you, you're product will be available and posted to YouTube after. Now that comes with its own mixed mixed questions. Do you want to leave that raw product out there? Maybe you don't. That's something maybe you only want to have the edited version out there, but it is something still that you, what's nice about that is that YouTube is available on pretty much every single device that you can think of because that is what they do. They excel at cross compatibility. So that has been essentially, I would say the leader so far, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I I would agree that Hangouts on Air are a wonderful place for somebody to start that's not familiar with video. It does the switching automatically. I am talking right now. The camera would switch to me. When I stop talking and Steven starts talking, the camera will automatically switch to him. As he mentioned, there are tools that you can use to change a little bit of that, but it is a great starter video podcast and you get a, a great... Uh, product uh, 1080 if your camera is up to 1080 Mm -hmm. and the audio is relatively good matter of fact we were comparing the audio on hangouts on air to skype uh, about a year ago six nine months ago or so and we thought that the Hangouts on air the google audio was even better than skype for a little bit and then it came back to skype so it's one of the reasons why we're doing this podcast the way we are but It is a great option. I would heartily recommend it. But the one thing that it doesn't have to it, in my opinion, is a easily adaptable chat room. It's it's hard to get the fan interaction live through chat. So that is something that another service does a little bit better on that we'll talk about in a second. Absolutely. And and the thing is with Hangouts on Air, you have to also remember that Hangouts itself was developed from Google Plus. And Google Plus has had a bit of a shaky road with Google. Yeah, there's always rumors about whether or not it's going to continue. So they have been slowly pulling that out of the Google Plus side of things. 
However, uh, there has been a bit of writing on the wall as well, because Hangouts on Air used to be the exclusive way that you could stream your live content, or most people could. There, there was what a service that they now are encouraging called YouTube Live. Very, mm -hmm. very similar to Hangouts on Air, just a little bit different behind the scenes sort of thing. But essentially, they end up with the same sort of front product to the viewer. Now yeah, it's through it's through YouTube versus yeah. Google Plus or, mm -hmm. or, or or your yeah your Google Plus account. But there's been a bit of a shift with them now allowing more people. There used to be a lot of restrictions with doing YouTube Live itself, and they used to make a lot of people have to go through Hangouts on Air. So you have these questions of why are they doing this? Why are they pushing towards this YouTube Live instead? So we do, you know the future of Hangouts on Air. It's used by a lot of people, but you can't help but wonder what is the future of it so that's something that you might want to be a little bit aware of just for your own edification if you haven't ever heard this or done it before search for google graveyard and it will bring up a bunch of applications that google has developed over the years that don't exist anymore like google listen for example there is <laughs> a pages and pages of stuff that were great ideas when they came out they just weren't either executed or uh people globbed onto them well or whatever so it is possible for any google product just to go bye bye because that's how they roll feed burner is one which we really haven't talked about because we don't really report yeah, it exactly so but a lot of podcasters use feed burner i wouldn't because it hasn't been updated in years and it's just waiting to go away although there might be something new with google play we don't know so we'll get to that when it comes out but in any event youtube live is probably where i would steer you versus google hangouts on air except for hangouts on air has the automatic switching i don't know if youtube mm -hmm. live does does it no youtube live youtube live a lot of times you need a third party piece of software to go into it but um yeah hangouts on air is something that uh it's free it's easy to use and in my opinion not a bad place to start if that is sort of sounding like mm -hmm. your cup of tea however with that said SP talked about the chat room. If you're looking for live chat interaction, yes, there is a built-in version on Hangouts on Air, which is tied to the YouTube front end that your audience can see and all this other stuff. It's not the greatest in the world. What I personally would recommend if you want that uh, and are willing to sacrifice a little bit of the, the video quality, the 1080 sort of thing, uh, audio is also, I would say, a little bit of a, a hit and miss with this service a lot of times it's been good uh, there have been some times that I, i've heard it's not been as good as hangouts on air and then the other thing too is uh you're going to lose the widescreen uh compatibility that hangouts on air has it's a service called blab now why is mm -hmm. blab something that you, i'm giving you a lot of negatives here you're probably saying Stephen, why why are you suggesting this over hangouts on air Number one, I just mentioned it, the chat room. It is phenomenal. It integrates very, very well between your video or your audio feed and your chat room. Another thing that's really nice is the discoverability on Blab, in my experience so far, has been much, much better than Hangouts on Air. It is amazing. There's a lot of shows over on the Gunna Geek Network, where we're part of now, uh, that have been doing Blab recently. And it's amazing the new faces that are finding them through Blab that they never, ever got on Hangouts on Air before. Right. So I'm predominantly the major user of Blab in the podcasts I produce on the Gunna Geek Network, Starling Tribune and Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is on Blab Wednesday nights at nine. Starling Tribune is on Thursday nights on Blab at nine. And we're able to get a kind of a built in audience. It's not as big as Spreaker, but it's building. And a lot of people can see uh, what's streaming on air and they come find you. You can uh, schedule your Blab in advance and you can tweet it out via, via Twitter or Facebook. You can also post it on anywhere, really. I mean, you just take the link and post it on Tumblr or where, wherever you distribute your kind. If you have an email list, you know, send it out on email. It doesn't matter. You can even put it on Google Plus. I mean, who cares? So you get it out there. People are, it's almost platform agnostic right now you do have to bring it up in special browsers like chrome or opera versus it doesn't play well with safari for whatever reason at least not yet it's in the beta uh development stage right and i don't know how long it'll be in beta but it's in beta right now and there are new 
features and capabilities that are coming into that every single day. Every every week I log in and there's something <laughs> new that I have to learn to deal with, but it's small and it's easy to learn and then you just move on. But the main thing of going there is the fan interaction. Now the it one is. thing, the ch- the chat room's great and the fan interaction is great and you can bring fans in very exactly. easily. Exactly. And that was one of the things that I wanted to touch on here is how do you bring your fans in to talk about the subject? That is something that you have, honestly, very difficult to do so on Hangouts on Air. You're going to have to open up your Hangout on Air so that anybody can join. You'll have to send them the link manually. People will start connecting and you don't really have a lot of control on how many people can come in at one time. Yes, there are different ways to do it through that cameraman app. But what's nice about Blab is you can go, I have one seat open that one person can fill. And then once it's gone, once you bring the person in and then they do their thing, they talk their talk and then you release it and another person can come in later. But you have the mm-hmm. control on whether or not they join as well, which is nice. Right. So it is limited on a couple of factors. So it's limited to four seats. You can't have any more than four. I've actually spoken to the CEO of Blab and he said, nope, I'm not doing it. I said, we would really like six to really work with our podcast on the Guinea Geek Network. And Shan is his name. He said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. We've done a lot of mar- market research and any more than four, you get a lot of talking over and it just it doesn't work out well, which I understand. It's a very dedicated market that we're in on the Guinea Geek Network of people that know how to podcast together and generally don't talk over each other. We talked about that before, I believe on episode one. But Also, in addition to the four seat limit, the chat room doesn't stay there forever. Matter of fact, it's just the latest, I believe in the current version, like 359 chat lines, and then it's gone. And with Google Hangouts on air, if you get into the Google post, the Google plus post, and and you actually leave the comments, they're there forever. Yeah. So that it's, it's a little bit of a give and a take. And the recorded version, what's nice with Blab, by the way, is they give you both an audio and a video with audio embedded version, and it's emailed to you. The links are emailed to you, and you can download them. There's also an automatic upload to YouTube, but basically, the video. what I'm trying to say is the video version does not have the embedded chat, so it's just the people that are talking. You don't see anything except for what's on your four screens, one to four screens. So you lose that chat room. It is not there. And any links that you might have put in the chat room, you have to put in your show notes. Absolutely. And and I've been really impressed with what Blab has been doing as far as trying to get interaction and things like that goes. And interaction has been a big part of the community so far. And that is the only real caution that I'm going to give you, which will segue nice into a couple other services that we have. If you are not doing video or you are not planning on interacting with the fans, maybe you're just wanting to send out a stream of audio somewhere. Blab is one that I wish you the best of luck if you want to try that. But the community so far in our experience has not been that uh, that supportive of that sort of use because they are wanting to interact or they're wanting to see people interact. So if you're looking simply to put out an audio feed, you may see a bit of the flip side of things where people come in and they see your blab and they leave because it's not what they're looking for. That's been our experience so far. Yeah, there's a lot of pluses, a lot of minuses to Blab. I've enjoyed using it and it has been very, it's opened up new doors to the two podcasts that I have on it. Actually three, because we did a couple of Voices Defiance on it too. But, and, and it's gotten us new listeners, opened up new audiences, as Steven has said before. It, it's, it has limitations. So just know that one last thing I will say pro- about both Hangouts on Air and Blab, both are ways to cheaply, meaning no expense, whatever, to start a podcast, just getting it out there, recording it with your buddies, figuring out what works, what doesn't work before you actually make a podcast. So if you're thinking about just trying it out and seeing if it works and not putting any money into it, you can do it one of those ways on Blab and uh, YouTube or Hangouts on Air. Agreed, agreed. And uh, they both have their pros and their cons. We've, we've tried to list most of what we know on both of the side of things. But, you know, you know really, the only way that you're going to know what's the best fit for you is to try them. You know, you may find that you like something about Hangouts on Air better, or you may like the fact that there is so much easy interaction with 
listeners on Blab. They both have have their pros and their cons. Uh, both services, I, I think, are great products, and they're both great things that people should check out and, and see which is the better fit for you. Now, let's say that you do want to go ahead and you are mostly just wanting to put out uh, maybe an audio stream. Well, we've got a couple of services for you that we can talk about. The number one, because these are this is audio only, is Mixler. Mixler is one that uh, SP has been playing with for about four or five months now, right? Uh, almost a year now. And Mixler has been great. The audio quality is great. I have only had a couple of issues with it when I've upgraded versions or, or whatever. There was one time that the server went down, but overall, Mixler has been phenomenal. It is just for me an audio stream, right? I, I ended up getting a cheap plan. I, I think the plan is ten dollars a month right now. In this again, late November of twenty fifteen, prices may change, so check Mixler out. But if you want an unlimited three hour stream, so you can stream as many three hour blocks as you want, which is ba if you have an hour podcast, that's what you're going to need. Uh, that plan is for you, and you'll get phenomenal. Uh, audio quality to your listeners as well as a multitude of different platforms that it's available because it's got apps on different devices as well. So I've really enjoyed working with it. I um, haven't seen audience growth with it. So they, it's your audience that comes to you and you provide it. So there's no built-in audience with Mixler, at least not that I've seen. Yeah, that's been what I've noticed too. Is is not a lot of random people coming in like I've seen with some of the other services like Blab. Uh, but I have to say, my experience as as a consumer of Blab or of Mixler, it, it's been very very nice. It has been easy to work on multiple devices. Very easy interface. I really enjoyed the notifications I got when I subscribed to your Mixler. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it I really really liked how it was set up with that. Um, so maybe that is an option for you if you've got an audience base that you're wanting to say, okay, come here on every Monday at 545, go to this website and you can watch us or listen to us, then that's great because Mixler might work for you in that sense. And uh, the quality was was really good too. Mm -hmm. I've enjoyed it very much, but I was looking for uh, additional distribution streams so in addition to mixler we talked about it before when we were talking about hosting companies i looked into spreaker and spreaker has been phenomenal except for the audio quality isn't that great now let's face it how many people are audiophobes like you and i are steven so sometimes they just want to hear it right so audiophobes even, like we're afraid of audio is that what you're saying <laughs> audio files i guess is the correct <laughs> Sorry, term yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no, that's complete. Yeah. Audio phones, <laughs> audio phones. Hey, I'm afraid of talk. No, no, give me the earphones. So, no, we're audio files. So, because we've edited so much audio, you just learn what's good audio and what's not. So, even we joke about it every once in a while. We're listening to live radio, right? And we're like, oh, I can't believe they put that out. And sometimes it just happens and you just got to run with it. But in this particular case, Spreaker has a degraded audio capability and you can definitely hear it. And it it's not bad, mind you, but it's not the great audio that you can get with something else like Mixler. Absolutely. And uh, I just want to give an example on this. Now, Spreaker is uh, one that, as SP mentioned, does have a bit of an existing audio base that can sometimes help you get some listeners. We randomly started putting Spreaker into the Gunna Geek podcast a few, uh, I think it was about a month ago now. And it's like Blab where there is an existing community there and you might find that uh, some wanderers do find your podcast. And uh, it is it is a great service, a little bit more expensive than Mixler, isn't it? It is. Now, both Mixler and Spreaker have 45 minute plans, right? But like I said, for what we do, you really want to go for that hour slot, which means you have to go to the three hour slot. So the Spreaker three hour broadcast plan is at $20 a month, but that gives you the 500 storage hours on it as well. And okay, you can restart your broadcast. So it'd be in two different files on, on the live but and then you just get rid of one. You can the great thing about Spreaker is you can upload a replaced audio file. So say you're recording locally, you have the 45 minute plan, you bump it to a second 
Spreaker session. So you get rid of that second speaker section at session afterwards. You delete it. And then with your own locally recorded file, you just upload that to Spreaker and boom, there's your live experience that's out there for people that listen to it for the next couple of days while you edit. Or if you get it out that night, you know, the finished version or whatever. So that is some of the bonuses of Spreaker. With Mixler, you can publish. I don't publish to Mixler because a lot of times on, because I don't know if there's a way, I don't think there's a way to replace the audio file. Mm. And I think the only way to get a replaced audio file out there is to actually stream it to Mixler right. and and record it new. There's a lot of pre-show stuff that isn't necess- that the average listener could care less about. They want a finished product. They want boom, boom, boom from beginning to end, and they want to feel like they've they're listening to an audio book or a TV show that's audio or radio show or whatever. They don't want to listen to the behind the scenes. Hey, Joe Blow, how are you doing today? Yeah, how was work? <laughs> you know, how the kids? Yeah, you know, we do a little bit of that on this podcast, but that's just to get us in the groove of talking as yeah. we forage forward. But in general, listeners, they want to hear the content that you're there discussing. In this case, today, it's live streaming. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of pre-show, if you are looking at a couple of different ways that you can do a bit of a a pre-show meetup with some people or whatever, uh, there's two kind of front runners right now. And uh, these are not going to be really, I I think, be something that you're probably going to work into your workflow if you are using something else. But maybe you do. I don't know. The one is called Meerkat, I believe it is. Yes, uh, M-E-E-R-K-A-T-A-P-P dot C-O is their website. And the other is Periscope. That's right. Now, these are two apps that are on your mobile device that you can you can stream your whole show on, right? But if you just want to stream your pre-show on and invite people over to come on over to where you are, you can do that. Hey, if you're doing Google Hangouts on air, you can do the pre-show on Blab or vice versa. So there's an unlimited number of, of options here. The only reason I would say not to do your whole show on Meerkat or Periscope is the quality isn't very good. There's not a really great way to get good audio in there because it's using the inherent microphone in in the phone itself so that yeah. is just I, again i'm an audio file and i like <laughs> to hear good audio and chris and the gonna geek network steven and myself we're all of the same viewpoint where good audio will get you a lot bad audio if you have good video and bad audio who cares so it, when we do panels at uh, conventions and stuff like that on the Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. podcast or Starling Tribune, it, we're always looking for as good of an audio as mm-hmm. we can. And that's tremendously hard in that live environment. But if you have um, excessive background noise or whatever, it's, just, it's not going to play well. People are going to either fast forward or turn it off and listen to your next episode if they come back at all. Absolutely. And... Uh, but the last part that we want to touch on in this part of our series here is how you may want to have people call in. Now, this is something that you can use these live. Uh, you may want to just be able to take voicemails. We'll talk about a little bit of both. Uh, number one, we talked about Blab. If you're going to be broadcasting out live anyways through Blab, I would encourage you to use that as your way for people to come in because it is very easy to do if you're using an iPhone or a a laptop. Android, I I believe it works, but not the greatest right now. Um, But uh, I do know uh, the bulk of your audience will probably have a pretty easy time calling in. And Mm -hmm. uh, what's nice about that is you're going to get video. If they're on their phone, they're going to be able to do do it on their phone. If they're on their desktop and they got a webcam, they can do that as well. So it's a really, really easy way to do it. And if you're already using that as your service to stream, why not keep it all in one spot? Yeah, it's really good audio normally through Blab. The only problem is it's all one track. So Mm -hmm. you're not getting separate audio. So if you have people talking over each other, that's what you're going to get. So for both Starling Tribune and Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., what we normally do is we end the podcast and we bring people in after the fact so everybody knows that it's a, a different segment, right? It's it's uh, going to be edited a little bit differently because you're using one mono stream. It's not even stereo, right? It's just one mono. So if, you're record- if your co-hosts are recording locally, you have that separated, but the second you guys overstep somebody else th- that is calling in, then game's off and, mm-hmm. and you got to use that mono audio. Absolutely. 
Uh, now, another option that you might have if you are wanting to to uh, have people call in is called Blog Talk Radio. SP, why don't you tell right. people about that one? Blog Talk Radio has had a horrible reputation in elite podcasting circles for quite some time. That's because it's been done all over the phone. And so for those of you that don't know, phone lines have a reduced audio bandwidth. You're you're not getting the full audio frequency available to you. And that's why phone calls sound different. Because it's not just because the microphone is substandard, because a lot of times the microphones in, in mobile phones these days are very good. But if you're actually calling in, mm -hmm. you're getting a lot of that um, audio quality. It's just reduced, right, by calling in. So you've got that to start out with. The other issue with Blog Talk is they've actually made some changes. And it is a great way to get that call-in number or whatever. And they've upped their audio quality out to, I believe, 128, which is phenomenal because I think before it was down at like 16 or 32 or yeah. something like that. But it's at 128. So if you're inputting good audio, you're going to get out good audio. The problem is the phone callers still restrict that audio coming in. And it's a little bit expensive for what you get. I'm actually not sure of their current price plan because... I, I really have I've been really hesitant to use it, but I will encourage you if you're interested in taking live, honest to goodness, phone calls like a radio show, go check that out. See if the price point meets with your capabilities. Just recognize that the audio quality is going to suffer a little bit just because the phone call itself has reduced audio capability. Yeah, but keep in mind, you also get the benefit of of extreme cross compatibility because pretty much everybody has a phone. So that is that is an advantage to taking an actual phone call. That is right. You wouldn't need any of these microphones. You just pick up your phone and you'd call and you could do your whole podcast with everybody calling in. And, and I will say this. You may get better phone or better quality from somebody on a phone versus somebody using their laptop, which has a microphone underneath oh, their laptop absolutely. or whatever. Right. So, you know, if somebody doesn't have an actual microphone near them or, you know, even a decent, like a decent webcam, because a lot of them have, have half decent microphones, you may get better quality from somebody using a phone, using what SP is holding up right now, earbuds. Uh, that is something yeah, that the, those mics can be fairly decent. They're pretty tangled, but these are my uh, Apple earbuds that came with my phone. I use them in the gym or whatever. And the microphone that comes with it are phenomenal. If you ha are trying to get to somebody, a guest or whatever, and you have absolutely no way to get a better audio, if they have those Apple earbuds, that is what to use, absolutely. And you'll get as good of audio as you can possibly get. The one drawback is you might get scratching noises as the uh, microphone... Um, rubs against their shirt or something mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the final two things that we want to talk about right now is how you might want to actually accept a voicemail so this is slightly off the beaten path but kind of the same thing uh getting an actual voicemail the couple or the few main services that we could talk about because you will have to pay for these because you have to pay for a phone number essentially and, and an actual voicemail box but uh the first is skype you can get an online Skype number and people can call. It gives you an actual phone number and leaves you a message on your Skype account. Retrieving that message to integrate in your podcast. I've done this before. Cannot can sometimes be a little bit hard. Uh, I used to use a third party application to actually download it because it didn't really it only allowed me before to play the message back. So I either had to record it or and then convert it or use this third party application. So Skype can do it. The reason I'm mentioning Skype is because a lot of people use Skype already to call various people, you know, make long distance calls, things like that. So if you already have it, look into the online number. It might not be a huge increase for you to get that ability. I used Skype mobile number for Voices Defiance podcasts where the person on the other end would not download Skype or whatever. So the only way that they could call in or no, 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 it was that they had limited bandwidth capability and that we had tried to connect with them with a better mic before and the Wi-Fi just wasn't up to it. So they had to call in on a number. I used it that way. And the actual Skype call feature works well great you still get that reduced bandwidth for yeah. the actual phone call but it it is something that i have used before and i would recommend if you have to use it yeah 
the one that we also have some experience with is Call 8, except it's like Cal 8 almost. It's K-A-L-L 8, so I don't know how they want to pronounce that, but uh, yes, that is what it is. Uh, that's one that SPs used for a couple of different shows and had really good experience with. Yeah, they went through a change of, of voicemail quality for a little bit, and there was a lot of background noise. They got rid of that, and I think it's automatic noise reduction that they do in post-processing or whatever after the person calls. It, they do a lot of the, um, the the things that we would recommend do to edit a file, and it's been phenomenal. It's $2 a month, but you get to keep the number. You don't have to have it active at any point in time. People just call in whenever, and the file is emailed to you, and you just download it, and you have a wonderful voicemail, and I use it on Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., so if you call the Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. voicemail number, you will get call eight and it, it's worked great. I would recommend it. It is $2 a month and then like seven cents a minute or something ridiculous like that. So it's, it's well worth the cost in my opinion to get a decent quality voicemail on a number that's going to stay yours for as long as you pay for it. And the last one that I have to talk about is called Magic Jack. Now, Magic Jack is one that uh, there has been a bit of um, uh, personally, I've got a bit of mixed reviews from people, family and friends that I know using it as an actual phone service. However, we've been using this for the voicemail line on Gunna Geek for a little while, and it has worked really well. What's nice about Magic Jack is you pay, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 35 bucks if you're an American for a year's worth of service. Uh, it does automatically you set it up and it automatically emails you the voicemail clips uh, i think in the state or in the canada it costs a little bit more the initial setup runs you about 15 bucks more and that gives you a physical device to use for magic jack should you want and what's nice about that is that means that yes you could use it to make phone calls uh you could just use it for yourself to make phone calls or you could maybe even use it to bring people in to a call. So that's something that there's a whole other advanced technical side of things. If you do want to do that, uh, definitely reach out to me. I'm happy to tell you a little bit about that, but it gives you both of those abilities. And uh, for the Gunna Geek podcast, it's worked really well. Yeah, it has. And there's one other one that I would recommend for a hobby podcaster. There's other more expensive options for sure. But the one free option, if you haven't burned it already on another number, is Google Voice, right? There's a limited amount of Google Voice numbers that you can associate with any given email account, with any given phone number. And different. I ran into the limitation. That's why I had to get Call 8 for Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. because I had burned my two free uh, Google Voice numbers on Legends of She or uh, Starling Tribune and Voices of Defiance. So it is a great. The quality has been pretty good so far. It has not really degraded, so that's good. But one thing that we talk, it is part of that Google graveyard yeah. issue where you don't know if it's going to be there or not for the long term. But as a hobby podcaster, it's free. If you haven't burned it, I would recommend starting out with something like that. Uh, I, If I start a new podcast today and I uh, need a voicemail number, I will go with Call 8 because I have phenomenal luck and it's cheap. It's two yeah, bucks a month, you know, whatever. Lot. So uh, that's the one I would use. But if if I was starting over again and had a number to burn, I would use Google Voice. For sure. For sure. Uh, but I guess that is going to take us to the end of this segment. Uh, yep. we, we did talk about a variety of things. So uh, if you have any questions on those at all, feel free to reach out to us. Always happy to answer them. Absolutely. But should we go ahead and move on to our special guest segment that we've got in the Better Podcasting Download? We sure should. I'm really excited about this. So stay tuned, folks. All right, here we go. All righty. So for this week's Better Podcasting Download, we have a special treat for you. If you are familiar with the Gunna Geek Network, the place that we're part of now, like we mentioned, uh, you may know of Chris Farrell for real. His name's actually Chris Farrell. I just call him that. Uh, but Chris is a long term podcaster that I have known. He has been doing this for about four years, I think. And uh, we are going to have Chris on here 
to tell you all about some recent experience he had doing the coveted solo podcast. Chris, why don't you say hello and tell everybody about yourself? Well, it's kind of hard to follow up such a good intro, Stephen, but uh, like he said, I'm Chris Farrell. I've been podcasting for probably somewhere around four years, 180 some odd episodes in on one podcast, and then I, I pal around with these bums on the Gonna Geek podcast. That's right, but, I called you guys bums. <laughs> <laughs> to- totally okay, because we're totally bums. Matter of fact, I've been called worse, but you... In addition to all things good and nerdy and the Gunna Geek podcast and your experiences with other podcasts like uh, Walking the Walking Dead, you also have started a new podcast recently, and it's a solo podcast, right? That's right. The elusive solo podcast, as I called it. I've always kind of joked about it. I was like, you know, one day I'm going to do a solo podcast. And over the years, I've actually done a few that will never, ever, ever see the light of day that I recorded them. And I was like, well, let's see how this turns out. And I went back and listened to it and went, no, no, <laughs> this will never go anywhere. So I guess I finally just got the motivation to try again. It had been about a year since I'd last done it and tried it again. I was like, hey, this is kind of fun. And I don't completely suck at this. Only about like 60% suck at it. And I can edit that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think you suck at all. You, you do it very well. You're very fluent. I know part of it's editing, but that's just going to come with time. How many episodes you got now? What, eight? It's eight episodes of Nerd Alert News so far. I'll probably sit down as we record this. It's Tuesday the 24th. I'll probably record the next one tomorrow after work on the 25th and drop it probably Thursday or Friday. I'm not sure. It's a lot of editing, I've realized, but not as bad. Well, not so bad now. The first few episodes, like I was literally spending about an hour to an hour and a half doing the recording, editing, and production work. Now I can do it in about 45 minutes because as I'm recording it, I'm like, oh, that sucked. Go back, delete that, record it again. Oh, that was terrible. Go back and do that again. So um, I kind of write the script out and then I edit on the fly, if that makes sense. Now, how much does your pre-show preparation take you for this simple 15 to 20 minute podcast? So the prep on this one for me is a lot of uh, doing the research. And when I get home from work, I'll generally pull out my iPad and I'll go and use Flipboard and read some news stories. Anything that looks really cool that I'll want to talk about, I then have a little app called Pocket that I use to uh, save those links to come back to. And then in between doing other podcasts, I have a list of news stories I want to use for Nerd Alert News. And I just take them out of Pocket, put them in there, and then write my script around them. So right now, I think I have about six stories sitting in the backlog that I can use if I want to. But some of them are no longer timely or I don't care about anymore. So I'm constantly adding to that list. And then when I have enough news stories, I think that I want to do, I then do them on the show. So the prep work is probably one of the bigger parts. And I could not do this if I didn't actually write out a script or an outline of things. That's the key for me. Without the outline, I'd be lost because that's what guides me and I fill in the gaps between it. Okay, so I have a question for you here because I I, I love your show. Uh, I've I've said that since you started doing it. I think you're natural at it. Uh, We've talked before on this podcast about the... uh, the experience I had trying to do a solo cast and the the extreme challenges that I had. What are some of the challenges that you had going from a history of podcasting with co-hosts to doing it all yourself? Uh, is there is there anything that stands out in your mind that has been a challenge? So the biggest thing for me is there's no one else to lean on when you're doing a group podcast awkward silences if they happen you have got someone else that can fill them in you've got someone else that can transition a new topic or bring something up when it's just you you go oh crap i guess i should stop here and figure out what it is i was supposed to do it's it's one of the reasons why i don't do it live yet like i have mad respect for tom Merritt, who does the daily tech news show because he does a show which is better than mine with the same kind of concept daily and does it live on google and brings in guests to do things i have no idea how he does it but i'm incredibly jealous of the fact that he does And I I would love to get to that point one day and start being able to do it live. Because right now, I probably spend about 30 minutes doing recording for a 20-minute episode. Because I'm constantly going, oh, that wasn't very good. Or, oh, I stuttered through that. Or, oh, I had a complete brain fart. So, the solo thing is tough because you've got no crutch. That's what it comes down to. So, you've got to, A, have confidence in yourself. And that's the toughest thing. Because the solo cast is hard. And B, you've just got to be ready to be like, oh, that didn't work and clear something away and start over. But if it doesn't work, you're the only one that hears it. (laughs) So you could just scrap the whole thing and just start over the next day. 
Exactly. And that's the thing you've got to learn because there was one I did on Nerd Alert News that just the whole first half of it, I went back and listened to it because it was like, something's not right here. And I listened to it and I went, oh man, it was a lot of me going, uh, um, uh, da, 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 uh, and I was like, I just was not in the right mindset to podcast today. That's the toughest thing is mm. my schedule. I didn't set super aggressive. I said one to three times a week. I've been pretty good about two, but there's just some days you try and do it. A solo cast, if you're not in the right mindset, you can't do it. At least in my case, I can't do it. I have to be in the right mindset. I have to have my script and I have to have a calm environment around me. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of know what you're talking about because with Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. Long Box Edition, it's not a completely solo cast. So I'm not claiming solo cast, but it's segmented. And in between the segments, I talk. And like you, I write a script. I stay to it for the most part. And when I ad lib, sometimes it doesn't work out and I have to stop and do a retake or whatever. But that is all done via just me and i unlike you am on a production schedule so wednesday night every week i do an episode of long box and i have got to get it out like i said it's it's a lot more formulatic formulatic for it's it's a lot more <laughs> formulaic yeah, formulaic is that what you're trying to say it's, yes exactly that's exactly what i was trying to say it's a lot more formulaic and it's a lot easier. So I have mad respect for you for what you're trying to do because you have to keep up that energy and the nights that you don't feel like doing it and you just, I ended up doing like two or three takes one time. I'm like, oh man, this does not sound good. So, but that's the benefit, right? Because you can redo it. It's, it's podcasting. Uh, it, unless you're doing it live, like Tom Merritt does, you can just do it over and over again until you got something that you can work with. So that's one of my goals, actually. I want to do a live one at some point, but I want to start feeling, I feel all right comfort wise right now, but I'm eight episodes in. It's really around seven or eight. Episode seven, eight is where I started like, okay, I kind of get this. I kind of get the flow of things. I get the fact I don't have to be straight up news. I can inject a little mm -hmm. humor or different tone and things like that. So I want to get there one day. It's just, it'll take a little time because I'm used to the group podcast and not doing it solo. I, I can see that. I can see that being very tough because we've actually been experiencing that sell ourselves that with that on better podcasting here. You know, after the first couple episodes, we we kind of did the whole where's the humor that we're used to having on Gunna Geek, right? Like, <laughs> right. And that's two of us. And that took us several episodes for two of us to notice. And it's just you doing it. So I can imagine how it must be. So the big thing, I know I said it before, show notes is huge on it. I mean, if you go and take a look at an ATGN show notes, and you can find those on our website, it's pretty much just an outline. It's, here's the news story we talked about, and here's a link to it. If you go and look at the show notes for Nerd Alert News, and you can find those on the webpage, they're all viewable for folks. It's literally, here's the article, here's where I got it from, here's like four or five bullet points about that. Here's the direct link to where it's from. And that's what's my script to start off of things. I have to have that level of detail because you can't try and read the article while you talk about it on a solo cast. It just doesn't work. Right. Makes sense. Makes sense. I, I have to know the material pretty well, which is why the TV show podcasts are really good. And that's why I watch the episodes twice is I watch it one for, once for fun. And the second time I'm like, okay, I got to talk about this. What am I going to talk about? And sometimes I do research into the comics and the comic book shows or, or the writer, the director or something like that. I got to know something about it to be of interest and value to the listener. So it's, it's not just grabbing a mic and recording i think it's very important you've been doing this for four years so far and so you have to do some prep and it and a solo podcast is difficult for you to start and it as it is for all of us i'm not just saying you chris i mean it, i think this is an important example for people that want to start podcasts it, it takes a little bit it, even for an experienced podcast or something new needs to be worked out. And I think you're doing a great job. I love listening to your podcast. I, it's the first thing I turn on at work when I'm listening to or watching, <laughs> reading emails, <laughs> listening or watching emails. Yeah, that's great. At, at work and I turn it on and I listen to it and it's great. So I, I love the days that you release because I have something to listen to at work. Well, I appreciate that. It's that kind of feedback that makes it a lot better for doing that. And I've gotten a lot of positive feedback. I've been lucky in that regard that people have been saying, oh, I really like the show. I like what you're doing with it. So that's the kind of stuff that fuels a podcaster to keep going. So if there's a show you really like, let the guys that are doing it or the folks that are knowing it, doing it know that. Agreed. Agreed. Good job, Chris. Well, thanks, guys. All right. Well, before we do wrap up this podcast, I would be missing a very important question if I did not ask this. 
Chris, you have heard SPNI frequently talk about the Audio Technica AT2005 USB microphone. And a short while ago, you decided to make the jump from the Blue Yeti to the AT2005. Yeah, there, there you go. The uh, audio listener right now on the video side of things, Chris is showing that. So you made that jump. Uh, from the Blue Yeti over to the AT2005. I just want to ask you a little bit about that. How come you did that? And what's your experience been so far with the AT2005? So a little background on why I did it. Uh, for those who might have seen some of my other shows, you might realize I podcast in my basement, which is great in the summer because the basement's always a little cooler. But in the winter, I live in the Appalachian Mountains. And when it's about 20 degrees outside, my basement's about 50 degrees, so I have a uh, electric infrared heater that I have down here with a fan in it, and using a condenser Blue Yeti mic, it didn't matter how I set that fan up, you were always getting a little zzzz fan noise in the background that I was having a real hard time eliminating. So a lot of the reason for the switch was because with this mic, you don't pick that up. I've had the heater on the past few podcasts I've recorded, nothing comes through. And it's also a little bit of future-proofing myself because it has both the XLR and USB inputs on the bottom. And eventually, at one point in time, I do want to get a, a mixer so I can do a smarter way of mixing in my audio <laughs> to the ATGN podcast instead of the uh, jury-rigged way I've currently got. And, and you're liking the mic so far? I love it so far. I, it I is have not to say, as it, it, like, you know, because I, I don't know if the audience knows this, but uh, I'm the one that produces the Guinea Geek podcast and does all the post-production. And I, every time I play it back and I'm editing it or whatever, I just love how you sound on it. Like, I think it is such a good fit for your voice. Well, I think it also fits better in front of my face for being able to podcast, because if you go back and look <laughs> at some of the older videos of how the Guinea Geek pod, not Guinea Geek, well, how ATGN and Guinea Geek, where I was using that mic were, the mic was like hanging in mm -hmm. front of my face about like that. So you only saw like two thirds of my face because of the way the mic was hanging down. The way my mic is currently set up, you see most of my face, a little bit of my chin's cut off, but that's about it. So the mic placement's a lot better for me as well. So what you're and saying is for the better podcasting audience, I should just install a Yeti here to block my face because yeah, that would do, you them, go. do them a service, right? There you go. Definitely. We would appreciate that, by the way. <laughs> Well, another reason that was good to make the switch is this swing arm is only rated to carry about like three and a half pounds. When you put the Yeti mic and it's a shock mount on there, you're probably right at that limit. So I was kind of shocked that my swing arm was not uh, gradually sloping down as we did the podcast. And, and I just want to clarify one thing or have you clarify one thing. How hard was it for you to set up that AT2005? Uh, it took me 30 seconds. And why was that? Because it's plug and play. Yeah, exactly. And that's one of the things that I don't think we we really hammered on that point before. The We did mention it in passing, but the AT2005 is possible to just be direct USB into your computer. And that makes it a hell of a lot easier than uh, having to go get a preamp and things like that. Yeah, but pro tip, always make sure you have the right mic turned on when you're using your recording <laughs> software because I, I have a uh, USB webcam. You guys have talked about the C920 webcam before, which has a mic in it. And sometimes you're not paying attention and you'll plug things in out of order or something like that. And your default mic is the webcam one. And you're like, wait a second, let me tap my mic. I don't hear mice. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. I, I think I think most people have been through that. Yeah, yes. it happens to everyone. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for talking about that. And thank you for coming on for the show here. So I think that is going to take us towards the end of better podcasting today. I just want to remind you, if you have any experience or you have any questions, please reach out to us. You can get all of our contact information at betterpodcasting.com. Please reach out to us. You can tweet us at betterpod. And uh, as always, if you have any suggestions on tips and tricks, we're always looking to share them. So please, please do tell us. It could just be, hey, I also did a solo cast and I found that this was a big hurdle. So feel free to uh, let us know. We'll probably put it on here. And then maybe you'll even help the great Chris Farrell with his solo endeavors. You might have used the wrong term there by saying great. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, well, uh, SP, you got anything before we do close up here? No, it's just a solo podcast is very difficult to do. It's very daunting, but hey, just try it for, you know, record a couple of pilot episodes, scrap them if you have to, but just try it and see what works and what doesn't work. And I'll guarantee you, if you like your 
end product, other people will too, and you just start putting it out there. But it might take a little work. It, that's fine. That's okay. It, just go through it and do it. And podcasting is fun, and that's what we're here for. It's a hobby. It's fun for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Chris, you got anything you want to chime in here, remembering that you can definitely plug all of your endeavors? The best way to keep up with all my endeavors is honestly head on over to uh, gunnageeknetwork.com. Just like the Mike Flag says, you can find my shows there and a variety of other awesome shows there. So just head on that way. Awesome. So for episode five of Better Podcasting, I'm Stephen John Drew. I'm Chris Farrell. And I'm Stargate Pioneer. Now part of the Gunna Geek Network. Bye. See you guys. Thank you for listening to another episode of Better Podcasting. We want to hear from you. You can find all of our contact information at betterpodcasting.com. If you like the show, please consider giving us a five-star review in iTunes. Thanks for listening, and we will see you again next week.